My name is Lanon Rain. Thank you for joining me in my studio and today we'll talk about getting into the world of tape. First, I'm going to show you the gear that I have, why I made the decision to buy it and how you can figure out what your first purchase could be. Speaking of purchase, I'll go over the cost that you can expect when buying this stuff and the accessories that you need to actually use it. After that, I'll give you an insight on how I set up my gear to integrate analog into my digital workflow. And lastly, I'll give you some examples how I use tape in my compositions exactly to give you some direction and inspiration. So let's get into it. The first thing I ever bought was this cassette deck. I didn't look for this specific one, I just wanted it to be cheap and to have three heads, which contrary to a two heads version enables you to listen to what's being recorded while it's being recorded. So it almost works like a plugin where you can just throw it on and hear the effect immediately, which just makes more sense in a music production context in my opinion. After using the cassette for a while, I really fell in love with the sound and wanted to dive deeper into that world so i got this tascam porter studio 424 mark one this one was definitely a little more expensive but having a cassette based mixer with integrated pitch and speed controls made it totally worth it for the stuff that i'm doing last but not least i got this uher tape machine again i didn't look for this specific one it just had to be made for quarter inch tape and cheap a lot of the times when you're not looking for something specific but just anything that's within your budget you'll stumble upon gear that it's just a lot more interesting and has way more character like this one which has four tape speeds plays back mono and stereo and even has a built-in tape echo which is crazy with all the stuff i just showed you i tried to imagine how i would actually use it and if it's really necessary for what i'm doing so if you ask yourself that before buying anything you will probably be good to go Here's a quick gear by gear breakdown of what I paid for everything including accessories so you can get an idea of what to expect and what's in your budget. I found a tape deck on eBay for about 50 euros, bought two cables to be able to record and listen at the same time for about 25 and of course a cassette for 5 euros. Depending on what you buy and where you buy it you can definitely go a lot lower than that. The Porter Studio is getting more and more expensive, I bought mine for 250 to actually be able to use Use it you need a cassette and two cables which brings us to a total of about 280 euros so definitely on the more pricey side the tape machine was about 120 got the tape for 30 euros two adapters for 20 euros because some of these old machines like this one have these german dean in and outputs two cables to connect to the adapters for 20 again which brings us to a total of about 200 euros remember there's something for every budget out there sometimes you just have to look long enough. Let's talk about setting up the tape machine with your DAW and your interface because it's probably the most complicated. I have my tape machine connected to my interface at all times because I use it a lot and I did so in a way that enables me to run sounds through there quickly, almost like a plugin. It's a pretty simple setup. Outputs three and four of my interface are going to the tape machine and the output of the tape machine is going to inputs five and six of my interface. So here's how it goes down when I want to run something through through the tape. The audio track which contains the sound I want to manipulate is turned into a send track by routing its output to 3 and 4. Next I create an empty return track with inputs 5 and 6 and just hit record in the DAW while the tape is running. Because there is a physical gap between the record and the playhead, the audio will not be recorded back at the exact position of the original signal so make sure to move it back after you're done recording. I use tape in all of my samples, sometimes to mess up or saturate a single sound. Sometimes I even put it on a master to glue the whole composition together and give it a little more character. Here's some examples. So I have this pad right here. What I like to do is record it to the Porter Studio and then move the pitch wheel while recording it back to get some kind of wobble effect. It's a classic of course, but it's really dope to run drums through the tape machine. I 
also love touching things on a tape machine while recording sounds back to get some cool dropouts. And of course running your whole mix through cassette can turn something like this. That's all I have for today. I really hope that this was helpful. If you want to have a more in-depth conversation with me about anything that you want to know, I'm offering one-on-one -on -one sample classes at the moment. More info about that in the description. I also just uploaded an unreleased sample plus stems to my Patreon. You can support what I do over there or right here by liking or subscribing. As always, I really appreciate you taking your time watching this and I'll see you Sunday in two weeks. Love. Mm -hmm.